Today we're going to take a look at the Buffalo Air Station WZR 1750DHP as well as the WZR 1166DHP. What we're going to do is we're going to wirelessly bridge the 1166 to the wireless connection of the 1750 using our 5 GHz connection. So the first thing you want to do is go to your Buffalo Air Station's router, not the one you're going to use as the bridge, but we have to configure the wireless in the router. The default username is admin and the default password is password. Once you're in, you just need to go to the wireless area and configure your wireless SSIDs as well as the encryption key. So I've set mine to YAMS and YAMS 5G for my 5 gigahertz, as well as I set the password to light switch on both. You want to set this bandwidth to 450 megabit for the 40 megahertz 2.4 gigahertz channel and 1300 megabits 8 megahertz wide for the 5 gigahertz channel. And so then we're going to select apply and that'll store these wireless settings. The next thing we need to do is power on the WZR1166 DHP as a wireless bridge. There's a physical switch on the rear of the unit that has AP and another one where you switch it to the right that has WB for wireless bridge. We're going to set it to wireless bridge and then plug in the power. So you need it powered off, set it to wireless bridge, and then power it on. When it boots, it's going to give itself an IP address of 192.168.11.100. So I'm going to go ahead and turn mine on now and then we'll continue. Okay, now that we're back, what we have to do is change our IP address to a static IP address that's on the same network that our bridge is on. So we need to go into our network properties. You can just right click down here and go to Open Network Sharing Center, Change Adapter Settings. Then we're going to right click on the network adapter that's plugged into the WZR1166. So you want to take your a computer and plug it into one of the four ports in the back that is not the WAN port. It's going to look just like this. It's going to be trying to identify, but there's no DHCP server, so we're not going to get an IP address yet. So I'm going to go into Properties, go down to IPv4, use the following, and we're just going to type in something that is on that same network, the 11 dot, that is not 100. And so we can just do this and hit OK. So now that we're on that network, I'm going to open my web browser again, and we'll go to the 192.168.11.100 and you'll be met with your 1166 login page. The username is admin, the default password is password. Once you're logged in, you can go to right next to this home button, you'll see the X, which is through our bridge. So you can simply just click on that and it's going to take you right to where you need to go. So now my pre-configured SSID which I set to YAMS and YAMS 5G. I'm going to go ahead and select that, type in my key. I'm going to use the 5 gigahertz just because it's a faster connection and it is going to have less interference being on the 5 gigahertz bandwidth. Once that completes, it's going to sit right back here because you because you could still select them. However, we're actually done in this section. You'll notice the X is now gone on my bridge. The air station is in wireless bridge mode and will have a connection. I'm going to click home and you'll even see this info. We can do a click on that very briefly and we'll see it's in repeater mode and it's connected. So we are now set to go back to our network adapters area and let's set it back to obtain an IP address automatically. And we'll press OK. It will now get an IP address that is directly from our main router. And you'll see I can now get back to my main router. I now will hold an IP address, if we go to the status, that is being given by the main router. Now I am wirelessly connected from my 1166 bridge to the 1750 DHP router. Now a great example for why you would want to have a wireless bridge that connects to your router is if your router is in one specific room of your house and you don't have the ability to spool a wire throughout your house to get to another access point. So that way you can plug in devices such as an Xbox or a PlayStation, a Google TV. Some devices have a wireless card built into them and some don't. Now even if you do have a wireless card built into them, right now an Xbox 360 or even a uh, a PlayStation 3 doesn't have wireless AC. So this is going to give me wireless AC connectivity that's going all the way to my router so that way you can use this to have multiple devices that you own all be on a wireless AC signal. It's, it's almost like buying a wireless AC adapter for 
all of your entertainment system. So you can set that 1166 on wireless AC to talk to your wireless AC router and then that's going to go out of your ISP. So you're going to have a much better connection on your internal LAN, uh, especially if you want to do some type of media streaming. If you want to be able to stream media from maybe a NAS or your link station or something that's across the room that's plugged directly into your router, you can now plug that either directly into this access point to, so they're all in the same connectivity or the link station could be across the house plugged in somewhere or you could plug it in to give it wireless capability. So there are many various uses for why you would want to have a wireless bridge and a wireless AC bridge on top of that. So thanks for watching. Leave us any comments.